the boss, um, heaping praise on Margaret Thatcher. Um, I think we can see what the Daily Mirror thinks about it. They weren't very impressed at all. What, what, what was he trying to achieve? I think he's, he's trying to say two things, really. Um, he talked about Mrs Thatcher, about Clement Attlee, about Tony Blair, as conviction politicians who got things done. And he's not the first Labour leader to do this. I remember Tony Blair describing Mrs Thatcher as a towering figure. I remember Gordon Brown invited her for tea in number 10, also describing her as a conviction politician who got things done. And what he's really saying is he doesn't want to be the kind of Prime Minister that gets buffeted around by events. He wants to be somebody who uh, achieves good things and uh, that's why he set out these five missions. Big long-term change for the country. That's his aim if he gets elected and that's what he was saying yesterday. But as a northerner, I know and I'm sure you're very well aware of what imagery is evoked by Margaret Thatcher. You know, people immediately go back, it's a long time ago now, but go back to the 1980s, the start of the 1980s and the miners' strike. You know, it could, some say, cost you votes. Look, it's not an endorsement of her policies. He's talking about being a conviction politician. And the other point, the broader point, beyond the name checks in the article, is one that's inescapable. Uh, when you've been beaten four times in elections, as we have, there is no route to power that doesn't involve appealing to people who've been voting Conservative in recent years. It would be very comfortable to always preach to your own choir, but in writing for the Sunday Telegraph, a Conservative supporting newspaper, in reaching out to people who maybe voted Conservative in recent years but have been feeling let down by the government, he is also saying, look at Labour, a changed Labour Party that's putting financial stability first, cares about national security, isn't going to promise things that it can't say where the money's coming from. It's a changed outfit from the one a few years ago. That's an important and indeed an essential message if we're going to do better at the next election than we've managed to do okay. at the last few. Do you admire Margaret Thatcher? Um, look, I'm not, it's I'll not wait. the word I would I'll use. Wait. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> look, I recognise she won three times. Um, I would hope if we were going to win elections, we would make change with the same determination, but not in the same direction. What word would you use instead of admire then? She was successful electorally. <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. Um, talk to me um, in a bit more detail, if you would, please, about what's going on in Gaza. And uh, we have seen that uh, Israel is moving further south and moving the people of Gaza, almost two million of them, slightly over, actually, to a, a plot of land that is... I'm calling it a plot because it's 14 square kilometres. Yeah, look, it's a desperate situation. Um, I think we all hoped that the seven-day pause that was in place last week would continue. Um, and I think everybody recognises the desperate plight of people there. And, you know, Israel has a right to go after Hamas, but uh, there's been so much suffering of individuals. Uh, so many innocent people have lost their lives. I think we all hope that this comes to an end as soon as possible. What's your message to Benjamin Netanyahu? I think the message is, you know, from many countries around the world. People recognise that after what happened on October the, the 7th, Israel has a right to go after the people who were responsible for that. But there's an enormous duty to try to preserve civilian life, to not kill innocent people in the process, and beyond that, to ask what's going to happen the day after. All these two million people you referred to, how are they going to live? How is it going to be rebuilt? What's the political leadership there going to be if it's not Hamas? Uh, so I think there are big questions for everybody uh, going forward Am I forward sensing here. a change in the tone from the Labour Party? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I'm not here to signal uh, any change in what we've been saying um, because right from the get-go, we've been saying if Israel's going to go after Hamas, they've got to abide by humanitarian, international humanitarian law and do everything they can to minimise civilian casualties. I think they are? Well, they say they are. I hope they are. I think it's a major duty. It's a 
you know, this is a built-up urban area. It's a very small place. You refer to the smaller place. Even the whole of Gaza is a small place for two million people. Um, so I understand the difficulty, um, but, you know, this, this is the duty because um, innocent people are losing their lives. Um, talk to me about the speech that the leader is going to give today on the economy. Is that, is that what is going to win or lose the election, the economy? I think it's going to be the biggest issue because we've got um, taxes at a very high level, we've had growth at a low level, we've had stagnating incomes, public services are creaking. When you add all that up, it's been a bad bargain for the British people. What Keir Starmer is saying today is he wants a better bargain and there's no way to get to a better bargain unless you improve economic growth. It's a, a, got to be the top task, the top priority. So that's what he's saying today. He sets out some measures on planning, on skills, uh, on a number of other things uh, to get better economic growth because that's the only way to generate the wealth, to improve people's incomes okay. and to have the public services. Just before I let you go, 9% of an increase on the licence fee, too much? Well, it's an agreement the government made themselves. I get a bit sceptical when I see how big the cost of living increase has been, how many tax increases the Tories have brought in, and then them see them return to an old theme of BBC bashing this morning. So are you um, happy to pay another 15 bit. quid for Look, the licence fee? You know, I'm not going to use that word, but this is an agreement the government made, and I think uh, you know, the BBC is an important institution. It's got to cut its coat according to its cloth. Um, but what the government is out today saying is we might break an agreement that we reached with the BBC a few years ago. Um, you know, so I'm what's sure Labour saying? A... You're saying 9% is a lot, but it's a deal, so they have to abide by it? Well, I, I think governments have got to think very carefully before breaking deals that they agreed, but maybe they take a different view. But £15? Look, it's a lot. Um, I understand that. Um, but as I say, I'm a bit sceptical about the Tories drawing so much attention to this this morning when the taxes they put in place are costing people thousands.